What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Dylan back here for another recap. We got the Washington Redskins and Philadelphia Eagles Monday night football matchup. Of course, my favorite time of the year, watching my two divisional rivals play on primetime television, and I'm the only one here to recap it. I mean, who doesn't love that? Who doesn't love that situation, right? So the Redskins and they go, oops, see, now you can hear now you can hear my own voice. Redskins and Eagles play today. Uh, nobody else is coming on tonight. Mitch is flying away back to Vancouver tomorrow, so he's busy. Kevil has not gotten back to me, so it looks like it's just going to be a solo recap for Dilly tonight. Not too long because I don't have a whole lot to say about this game, but I, I will give you the stats, give you my opinions, and uh, we'll talk about how both teams are going to have to move forward um, as they are now both 6-6. Six and six. The Eagles take a 28-3 victory at home against the Redskins, a very crucial game for them. Uh, it kind of seemed like a one fair, uh, one, you know, one team contest, if you will. And it didn't seem like a whole lot of things were going in the direction of the Redskins, especially in the fourth quarter. Um, but yeah, they're both six and six and they're both technically one game behind the Cowboys uh, for first place in the NFC East. Both of them have lost to the uh, Cowboys. Redskins have won one of their games against them, but we're going to go through the stats. We're going to go through my opinions. We're going to go through the chat if there even is one. Uh, and then we will uh, head out of here. So uh, for the Redskins, uh, it was just a very, uh, very hard day at the office today, especially on offense. Uh, they had Cole McCoy start the game. He was four for four for 50 yards. Uh, a lot of pressure was getting onto him, though. He already got sat in his uh, brief, excuse me, his brief appearances out there on the field. Uh, a lot of pressure was coming from the Eagles side of the ball. And uh, it was not a good start uh, for the Colts. I mean, they did – or the Colts, Colts McCoy. Uh, he started to try to drive down the field, but it just didn't seem like a whole lot was going on. Um, and then he ran uh, on a certain play. He was trying to rush around traffic. He slipped. He hit his leg on uh, another guy's uh, leg, and he broke his fibula, I believe, is what he broke. He's out for the year. So uh, that's a very difficult situation. He was still walking, which kind of surprised me. When they said he was out for the year, he was walking. They didn't need to use a card to, you know, hold him up or anything. He was walking on his own strength. But he broke something. He's out for the year. Um, this is already your backup quarterback. I know he's been in the system for a couple of years. But this was like your one quarterback you had in there. And now you had to go to Mark Sanchez, who, uh, as Monday Night Football put it, you know, you learned 15 plays in the playbook for the Thanksgiving game. Now you probably have like 35 under your head. So, like, you don't have a whole lot learned in the system. You're very limited in what you can do. And um, this was Mark Sanchez's first real action in a very significant amount of time. He was in there for a couple of drives in that last game for the Cowboys in 2016. I remember that quite frequently, or, you know, I remember that pretty easily. Um, but this was like his first big start since like 2013 or big, first big gameplay. He hasn't thrown a touchdown since week six of 2012, which is ridiculous. By the way, did 2012 call for this NFL game? Because like you had – Mark Sanchez in this game, you had Adrian Peterson, and you had Darren Sproles. Very weird scenario there. But, uh, yeah, Mark Sanchez came in. He was 13 for 21, 100 yards. He had a pick and got sacked two times. I don't really know what I could ask for Mark Sanchez. Like, he did about as okay as you possibly could. And uh, the first play he got in there, actually, he was helped out by Adrian Peterson, who had a 90-yard touchdown. Surprisingly enough, he didn't get 100 yards. <laughs> You know, we had nine carries. It was one carry for 100 yards, or excuse me, for 90 yards, and then, like, had a bunch of negative plays that got him down to 98. So very strange there. But uh, that one touchdown run actually gave them a 10-7 lead at one point. Uh, and they, the Eagles coming into the fourth quarter only had a one-point lead. It was 14-13. to 13. Uh, I think both teams were scoreless in the third quarter, but it was just game over from that point on uh, once the Eagles were getting it going. But in terms of the stats, uh, Mark Sanchez didn't do very good, but – I can't really ask him to be 100, uh, you know, like the best player ever doing what he did out there tonight. Adrian Peterson, nine carries, 98 yards. Um, they kind of had to abandon the run game once they realized they were in a deficit, but you're also in a conundrum because you have to have a quarterback out there who doesn't know the playbook. So, you know, he could have used it a little bit more. I'm still shocked that Peterson didn't get 100 yards as I'm looking at the box uh, box score. Uh, as for the receivers for the Redskins, Josh Doxson, three catches, 51 yards. Jamison Crowder, four catches, 36 yards. Jordan Reed, uh, four carry, or four catches, 21 yards. Chris Thompson, three for 18. Uh, not a whole lot going on here for the Redskins. Their best receiver is a guy that I don't think is very good in Josh Doxson. 
Um, he tried to do his best, but these guys tried with whatever they could get because the ball wasn't going to be thrown to them very many times, but they got a couple of catches. They were okay at best. They didn't do a whole lot. Uh, Doxon's 32-yard catch was the best play for them on offense the entire night besides a long-ass run from AP. But it was good to see AP run. But, uh, yeah, there wasn't a whole lot that you could do there. Um, and, by the way, Mark Sanchez did recover a butt fumble. That's good. His own. He recovered his own. For the defensive side of the ball, uh, Zach Brown was probably their best player on defense. Um, he did a very good job of trying to get some pressure and, uh, you know, do his best to make this game uh, a little bit better for the defensive side. Ha ha Clinton Dix, he played uh, pretty decently well. And uh, Josh Norman picked himself an interception uh, for himself. So that was that was actually a really good play when he got the interception. The Eagles were driving down the field and it was like at the five-yard line was able to intercept it on a pretty bad pass from Carson Wentz. Uh, that was the solid interception for him, but not a whole lot of action elsewhere. In fact, if you look on the defense, Mark Sanchez is listed on the defense. You know, that's never a good thing. When a quarterback is listed on defense, and you're trying to uh, tackle him after his interception. But, uh, yeah, I would say the best players were Zach Brown, HaHa ha, Clinton Dix, and uh, Mr. Josh Norman. Uh, the DJ Swearinger comment, I, I tweeted this out in the first quarter. Um, Jason Witten was like, yeah, I played DJ Swearinger many times, many, many times. You played him three times, and two of them were in your last year of your career because you've had to play him as the Redskins. You played him one time that wasn't in your own division. What? Ah, that just bothered me. Um, okay, Eagle side of the ball, the team that's probably going to have more significance in the next four weeks. Uh, Carson Wentz, 27 for 39, 306 yards, two touchdowns, and one pick. Um, I thought some plays were really, really solid. He was getting a whole lot of pressure on that one play. He was just trying to throw to the sidelines, and it was a completion. I thought that was a great play. Um you know, other plays like that Josh Norman interception was a, were just pretty bad throws. But overall, I would say he had a pretty decent night, uh, one of his better nights in the last couple of weeks considering what the Eagles have done. Um, but, yeah, I mean, last week I guess he did have a good comeback victory. But as a whole, I think this was one of our better performances in the last month. And uh, just seeing that he can, you know, try to lead this team to something. They know that they have a chance to at least just try to get the wild card. Um, and, and getting that done. And I think he had a decent performance all said and done. He threw a whole lot of yards. You know, he has his favorite targets. He was able to oh, find somebody open. We'll talk about uh, in a second. He was able to find him a lot more. And uh, that's a good thing going forward. The running game got a little bit better today. Excuse me. Josh Adams, 20 carries, 85 yards. Corey Clement, 5 carries, 27 yards. And a returning Darren Sproles, 4 carries, 22 yards. Um, I would say this is one of the better rushing performances for the Eagles in a long time during the season, which is not a very great thing to say, uh, considering the leading rusher was 85 yards. But I liked what I saw out of Josh Adams. This is a kid that I ranked, at, uh, I believe, number 10 in my um, running back class, draft class of 2018. Uh, there was a lot of great running backs in that class. Man, that's going to be one of the best of all time, I'm telling you what. But, um, you know, I ranked him number 10, and uh, he went undrafted because of that injury that he had on his foot. Uh, and people were concerned about it. Also that I talked about, he was just so damn slow in his <laughs> in his time in Notre Dame, in his good season in Notre Dame. But came undrafted, the Eagles picked him up. They really needed some running back help with the loss of J.J., and he had his best game of his seasons, uh, of the season so far for him. Um, they gave him the ball a lot more. He was able to uh, convert on some really good third downs. He had some long second down runs to put him in better position. And uh, overall, I think this was his best game of the year. And this is one of the better rushing games for the Eagles. Going forward, they're going to have to continue to do that. They're going to have to continue to focus on getting Josh Adams the ball. And he's their best running bet that they've got. So uh, give him those, give him the rock. Uh, give him some chances. They gave him a whole lot more chances than the Redskins did with their boy, uh, with their with AP. So uh, good stuff to see from Josh Adams. Hopefully he can pick up some more yards. Didn't have a touchdown. Um, Darren Sproles got the rushing touchdown. But uh, good to see Josh Adams on the field. Um, yeah, the guy that uh, Mr. Carson Wentz was able to find a little bit more open today uh, was Golden Tate. Seven catches, 85 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, this was his big performance for the Eagles. The first couple of weeks, he was really disappointing. He was uh, – apparently reports were coming in that he couldn't – there was not a spot for him on the roster. Like, they just couldn't fit him into the system. Uh, and finally, it looked like they got something going. Uh, seven catches, 85 yards, his best performance uh, for the Eagles all year. Uh, that's good for them. They were really going to need that piece. Um, Zach Ertz, nine catches, 83 yards. He's trying to rack up the most receptions by tight end in NFL history. I think he has 93 on the year, 92, somewhere around there. And uh, he's 18 away from Witten's all-time record for a season. 
Um, but they brought that up quite a bit. And they're going to play the Cowboys next week. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Zach Ertz, he's obviously the biggest contributor to the offense uh, in terms of the pa- uh, the catching game, the receiving game. And uh, he's just a great tight end. He's the second best in the game right now uh, in terms of this season. And uh, he, he's really going to help them out going forward. He makes the plays necessary. He's a very good guy. You want to throw on third and eight uh, or get the big down uh, conversions when you need to. Uh, he's a guy underneath that's really impressive. He's a tight end that can do it all. And uh, he obviously helped out their offense today. Nelson Aguilar, four catches, 56 yards. You were wanting to see what his role was going to be like with uh, Golden Tate. He had more targets than Golden Tate. He just didn't have enough as many catches. But uh, decent enough from him. Corey Clement's big contribution was three catches for 47 yards. He did pretty good on that. Alshon Jeffrey, three catches, 31 yards. And I still don't understand what the Eagles are doing with Alshon Jeffrey. Like, they haven't just gotten with Alshon Jeffrey, uh, it seems like. He'll have, one, like, a couple of great games in the season, but overall just getting overshadowed by other players, and it's kind of baffling to me. And Jordan Matthews had his one catch for a touchdown, so I guess that was kind of a good thing. Uh, Philadelphia defense, who are the big players for the Philadelphia defense? Uh, Fletcher Cox had a very solid game. You know that he's one of the better defensive players in the game. I think he's the fourth highest guaranteed play player in the game. So, you know, he was going to come out there and play, and he did very well. Malcolm Jenkins, I think, had a pretty solid game. And uh, overall, just this defensive unit um, was able to was able to realize, hey, these quarterbacks aren't very good. <laughs> Our secondary is not very good either because we have a whole lot of injuries. Like we're, uh, Douglas was probably their best defensive secondary player they have right now, which, ick. But uh, <laughs> you know they they were they realized that they don't have a whole lot of talent. Uh, by the way, Michael Jenkins has a sack in this game, so there you go. Um, they realized that they they just need to put the pressure on their offensive line, who also has a lot of injuries. The Redskins have a ton of injuries this year, but on their offensive line, they're missing Shrift. Uh, or Brandon Sheriff, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, they're missing quite a bit of talent uh, on the front line. And their defensive unit was like, okay, here we go. You know, uh, Cole McCoy does know how to run outside the pocket a lot, and that helped. But once he was gone from the game, you got Mark Sanchez, and you got a guy that doesn't know a whole lot in the playbook. I think you're going to be pretty successful in what you're trying to accomplish. So the Eagles defense got it done, and uh, they were able to uh, put some pressure on Mark Sanchez and get, get the job done. Let's look at the Redskins and Eagles' last four games of the season before I get into the chat, and then I'll head out of here. Uh, Giants are going to be playing the Redskins next week. Uh, at, the Redskins are at home. They're favored by one and a half. I don't really know how they're going to be favored. I mean, I don't know if that's going to change. So they got the Giants, the Jaguars, the Titans, and the Eagles once more. Uh, again, the quarterback situation is their biggest problem, and they, they have some a couple of holes elsewhere, but... Like when you don't have a quarterback that doesn't that knows lickety shit about the offense right now, I don't see many wins coming out of them. Their lone touchdown was a long, long run uh, that not a lot of people would have expected coming in. So yeah, it's a it's a little bit uh, discouraging, if you will, uh, for the Redskins. For the Eagles, their schedule does not get any easier. It gets a lot more difficult. Uh, they got to play the Cowboys at in Dallas. Um, which is where Dallas has been a lot better at this season. And they have to play the Rams, the Texans, and the Redskins. Um, if you don't know, the Rams are 11-1, and one, the Cowboys are 7-5, and five, and the Texans are 9-3. and three. So I don't think that's a very favorable schedule. They really needed to pick up this victory. But that was a hard, hard four-game stretch to get down the road there. Um, I don't think both teams are really playoff uh, favorites. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. Uh, the Redskins, because of all their injuries and and just not having the enough talent uh, to back it up or to back up, you know those those players and the Eagles, they have that incredibly difficult schedule. And I think some other teams in the NFC you just have a better shot. That's that Seahawks Vikings game is going to be crucial. I'm going to be I'm going to be really excited to watch that one next week. But you know, there's so just some other teams that I think they're going to be better uh, come that time. But if the Eagles can pick up that victory against the Cowboys, you never know. That could be very helpful. Uh, and maybe they still want to get that division crown. I mean, they would be seven and six, and the Cowboys would be seven and six. So uh, that would be pretty interesting, all things considered. But uh, I think the, I, I think that neither of these teams are really going to be going for the playoffs uh, moving forward. And uh, you know, it is what it is. But I, it was a, it was a okay. Jesus, no, sounds on. It was a okay game. You know, it, it was, it was decent for what it was, but nothing much more to it. 
Uh, both teams don't really give me this vibe of anything great going forward. So we'll have to see where it goes from that. All right. Moto is in the chat. Says, watch out, Cowboys. The defending champs are coming. Yeah, those champs, those defending champs that don't look anything like the defending champs. <laughs> they're coming. But they're always a divisional rival. You never know in those division games. we got to win. Mustard Bus, what's up, brother? Donald Brown, let's go. Birds? Birds? No, no, no. If we can sustain a run game, we can beat any team, says Willie. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. You guys lost 48-7 to to the Saints. I don't know about that. Uh, coach says, Phil D, due to expo or due to injuries, are not good. Uh, Phil uh, Philadelphia's D. Cowboys and Rams will expose them. Sanchez, Sanchez really? Lol. <laughs> well, yeah, not much more you can do about that one. Sanchez is your boy. Um... Carson and Earths are moving the ball. That's their biggest thing. That's by far the best thing that he can say. Um, Coach, did you watch the game before it started? I'm sure you felt Saints would trash them any given Sunday, bottom line. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. But, I, I mean, it's just the Redskins are not – I mean, the, the, Philadelphia's defense is, is, is something that's going to be worth noting going forward. Can the, Red, the Eagles win? Yeah, but I might, I might even – I'm just going to pick them because I'm 3-0 – with the Cowboys, like when I don't pick the Cowboys, like the Cowboys are three and zero when I don't pick them. So, smart brain here. I'll take I'll take a loss in picks just for that, but I don't see it coming. Um, Bodo, you're absolutely correct. You better find a spot for Tate if you're the Eagles. You better find you. I mean, you you guys traded a third round pick, which is not as much as we did for Amari Cooper. But if you want to solidify that offense and you went and got him uh, for the piece that you wanted, you got to find something to get for him. Fact or fiction, Washington size EJ Manuel tomorrow. I, I got to go with fact. Uh, I don't know if it's exactly EJ Manuel, but they will try more quarterbacks. And I know EJ Manuel was on that list. They need to sign another backup quarterback. They have to have somebody on there. Their emergency quarterback was Jordan Reed. So they got, like, I, I like Jordan Reed, but he's a tight end. He's not a quarterback in the NFL. Uh, although he did throw that freaking, that was weird. Was he third and 16 or something? And he throws it back to the other side. What the heck? This is a Music City miracle. Jesus. But, uh, yeah, they'll probably go to somebody else. I do believe Schwartz needs to blitz more. He needs to have uh, have that Jim Johnson mindset just a little bit. Uh, actually, yeah, that would help out quite a bit. I, again, their defensive line is the best thing I can say about their defense. Let's say, uh, uh, excuse me, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, those are two really solid guys uh, coming in on that defensive line, and that's really going to help out, especially with the Cowboys' offensive line. That's been pretty uh, pretty decent o overall this year, especially when you have Tyron Smith coming back. Um, you still got Zach Martin and Tyron Smith. Those are two very solid guys. If you want to put the blitz, you got to put more pressure on them and try to get through those other three guys. But it's a lot better um, – with that, and plus, Dak Prescott holds onto the ball for eight seconds too long every play. So if you can get it on there and put that pressure, you can get a couple sacks on. Eagles beat Dallas, lose Rams, beat Texans, beat Skins. So of course, Bodo's going to say that we we're going to lose to the, Cow uh, the the Eagles. Washington needs to draft uh, trade up to draft Herbert or Greer. They do need a quarterback. Past this season, um, Alex Smith injury was really really bad. And, uh, you know, he's not very young, so uh, I just don't know what they're going to give out to him. And is Herbert the guy? Like, is he the cat? Like, this NFL draft class is very slim on offensive players. We were given a, a – well, I don't know what the word you want to call it is, but we were given a gift by the NFL gods last year for how much NFL talent there was on the offensive side. Not exactly from receivers. Like, there was Calvin Ridley. There was Corden Sutton. That, that's good stuff and all, but, like – the running back department and the quarterback talent, you've seen so many this year. It's ridiculous. This year, we're going to see a lot more defensive talent. Um, there's only one quarterback, maybe two, that's being considered for the first round. I would see Justin Herbert and uh, uh, Will Greer. But not a whole, not a very great draft class for the offensive guys. Maybe they would, Maybe they could take their time on it. We'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll think about that. Uh, Loki, feel bad for the Redskins. They have way too many injuries. This is a team that just has injuries every year, man. Like every year, it just seems like, oh, we're 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 gonna talk about the Redskins and maybe they can do something this year. Oh, year's twelve injuries. <laughs> it's ridiculous. They had that last year for sure, and it just it's, it's sad. John's in the in the chat. What's up, John boy? Hot take hockey. 
Uh, no, Gruden will have a job until they move to Vegas. Well, he's, he signed a 10-year – wait, yeah, he signed a 10-year contract. Absolutely, he's going to not get fired. Carson needs to toss the ball to the non-tight ends. Well, I mean, he did throw it to Golden Tate, and it works, so. Uh, oh, okay, Jay, not John Gruden. Okay. I was like, what do you mean? I was like, wait, we're talking about a different team here. Mike McCarthy to the Cowboys. No, 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 no. No, I don't want that. I don't want that. I do. I absolutely do not want that. Um, I'm just not a fan of the Mike McCarthy message. I, I get it. Aaron Rodgers is a little bit of a drama queen. He's a little bit of an overreactor here, but like, I do not want. Um, I, I don't want him here. He, he's his styling of coaching worked ten years ago. You know, it worked in the old style of the NFL, but with this new guard, he's just not updated. Like, he has not updated his game plan at all. I don't care if he's going to call – like, he needs to stop calling plays if he's going to be head coach too. It's just not going to be a work, working scenario. Um, it wouldn't be very helpful uh, for us, even if it would get rid of Jason Garrett. I'm, we're trying to win, you know what I'm saying? I don't, like to, I don't like to clap for Jason Garrett. I hate him with a passion. But Mike McCarthy, if we're, if we're going to get rid of Jason uh, Garrett, go get somebody that's actually good. Uh, Darius Geis next year, what's your expectations? I'd have the number three running back in this draft class uh, before he tore his ACL. And uh, it, it all comes down to the injury aspect. Like, is he going to be 100% prepared coming off of that uh, leg injury, which is not an easy injury to come off of. I know a lot of people in the NFL do it, uh, and some do it quite well, but that's not an easy injury to come back by any expectations, and you're getting run right into a new offense. So um, I think he's going to do solid enough. He's going to... Uh, how about their, the Redskins game? I know they kind of just fell into the lap of uh, Adrian Peterson this season. Like, they didn't expect to have that happen, and he's probably going to go for 1,000 yards. But um, he's just going to be a, a much younger guy with, uh, I think, some talent on him uh, that I think can do pretty well uh, come next year. It was just really sad to see him uh, not be on the field this year. I know a lot of people commented to me about uh, <laughs> about Darius Guy's going to be this big playmaker this year. A lot of comments you can go back on in the preseason and just laugh at. That one I feel a little bit bad because of the injury, but like the Lions comments, whoo, I eat those up every day for breakfast. Those are so damn funny. I see a lot more college coaches making the jump to the NFL uh, than normal this offseason. It, it actually could be quite a, a big thing. I think the biggest one, obviously, is Lincoln Riley. Is he going to be leaving Oklahoma? I don't really know. Um... I don't think Oklahoma is going to beat Alabama. That's going to be a very difficult challenge. Um, but if they win the national championship, they would be staying. Otherwise, I think that's a pretty uh, pretty intriguing head coach right there. And Lincoln Riley is a very – he's a young cat. So uh, I could see that. Uh, I think there's a couple of other head coaches that are be looking in there. But I don't really know if the head coach uh, game is very favorable this year, like in terms of going to different teams. What position – like what team – would have a great fit, like where a coach would be like, it's the place I want to go to, you know? Like last year, again, we're going back to last year, but there were some head coaching positions, and I'm like, okay, this could be a favorable spot. You give them some time, you work with it, you're going to go there. But this year, I don't think there's very favorable head coaching opportunities, uh, even though there's been quite a bit of uh, head coaches and offensive coordinators getting fired. So I'm predicting a Vikings versus Cowboys playoff game. I, I'm thinking it's either going to be the Cowboys and the Vikings, the Cowboys and the Seahawks, and personally, I would rather play the Vikings. I think we can beat the Vikings a little bit easier than the Seahawks. Not saying we can't beat the Seahawks, but they beat us in week three. And we're not very good at winning clutch games against the Seahawks. But also, I think the Vikings have a lot of weaknesses that can be uh, moved on. But then again, we're going to see the Vikings and the Seahawks on Monday night. So next Monday night. So Does the NFC East have the four worst quarterbacks of all the divisions in the NFL? Um, I'd actually have to think about this one. Okay, so in the NFC, what, and that's going to take too long. Maybe they're in the bottom, but I don't know if they have the worst. AFC East does. Well, you, well, you still have Brady. Like, even if you want to take the other three quarterbacks combined to be the worst, but you still have the best quarterback in the game, like, you know, in, of all time in there. So it's kind of hard. Um, I don't know if there's any other ones I can think off the top of my head because it definitely is not the AFC West. Can't be the AFC North. AFC South, AFC South has a, well, no, I mean, so AFC South has two really bad ones and two pretty good ones. Then there's our division, um, NFC North, you got Rodgers in there. NFC Because every division has like one great quarterback in it, you know, and Carson Wentz is probably the best quarterback we have in here in this NFC East. 
And I wouldn't say he's breathtakingly amazing, but he can make some really solid plays. Uh, it's just if you had to rank him out there. But if you're taking Brady out, it's the worst. But you still have to put Brady in there because he's in the division. So, um, Bears versus who in the wild card? Okay, so the Bears, I'm predicting, are still going to get the three seed, which would mean they would play the six seed uh, in the wild card round. And um, in all likelihood, based on schedule, I think the Seahawks actually get the six seed. Um, I, well, actually, well, no, it depends. It all depends on that Monday Night Football game. It really does. I think the Seahawks schedule is very, very difficult, and that's why I'm putting them at the sixth seed. But if the Seahawks can beat the Vikings, I think they're in the driver's seat to get that fifth seed. So um, it is what it is, but probably going to be either the Bears. It's it's most likely like 90% going to be Bears versus Vikings or Seahawks. But I'm going to put my money in that it's probably going to be Bears and Seahawks uh, in that matchup and then Cowboys-Vikings in the other matchup. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this recap of the Redskins and Eagles. Uh, subscribe to the bottom of my view for more content. Thank you very much for the 6,000 subscribers. We do really appreciate it. We're at 6,016, so help that uh, help that get us to even higher uh, – what am I talking about? I don't speak English. Thank you for getting us to 6,000 to 6,016. Help us get even more subscribers that would really appreciate us. Uh, we do feel uh, very humble by that experience and, and you guys giving us all the, all the help here with the subscribers. Uh, Wednesday, uh, we'll be back on for picks and I will be uploading my video talking about franchise mode for Madden 19, which will start next Saturday, not this upcoming Saturday, but the Saturday afterwards, December 15th, I believe. Uh, I will be uploading that video on Wednesday, pretty simple video, uh, just myself recording in front of the camera and this tripod here, uh, telling you all the information about that and what you guys can do to help me out on that series. Um, after that, I won't be able to upload any solo videos until that franchise mode, but I'll be on here a couple more times. Week 14, we don't have a stream up yet, but um, thank you, Bodo, for the good job. Appreciate it. And the fire Tomlin comment. <laughs> Always appreciate it. Um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see what, what's going on with the uh, Week 14 live stream. Week 15, I've already got a plan since school is going to be finally freaking done. Actually, no, I think I got plans on the – son of a bitch. I think I got plans that day. Oh, man, I think I got plans for the Patriots-Steelers game. Son of a bitch. Anyways, we'll figure it out this week. Uh, we'll figure it out later on, and uh, we'll get a Week 14 game out there for you guys. So, doing it from the bottom line of view. Peace out.